Hello and welcome to this walkthrough of our demand forecasting extension for Business Central. This is an extension that allows you to generate demand forecast using the time series API that's hosted in Azure. It's an extension that's available in AppSource. So if you go to AppSource and search demand forecasting or Naviona, you'll find the extension and you can install it in your own Business Central environment. Once it's installed, the first thing you want to do is go to the manufacturing setup table and confirm if you're forecasting by location, you need to have this checked here. And if you're forecasting by item variance, you need to check this box here. These are two standard options that come from Business Central, but it affects how the suggestions are generating, uh, generated in our demand forecasting extension. Once you confirm this, you go to the demand forecast worksheet. Before you can use it, you need to activate the setup. So from here, you can click demand forecasting setup. This is a setup table that has some of the default values for how the demand forecast is generated. You can pick a period type, so the default is month. You can set the uh, history how far back the system should collect historical data to base the forecast on. So it defaults to 12 months. And how far into the future should the demand forecast be generated is defaulting to six months. And then the time series model, the default is ARIMA, but you can change it to any of the other time series modules that comes with the Microsoft time series API. So to use this extension, you need to enable it. Once you enable it, you also need to confirm the terms and conditions for using this AI models. I say accept. And that's all you need to do to kind of activate this extension. The next step is to use it. And uh, to use it, you populate the worksheet with your items. And one way of doing that, you could either enter it manually or you can use this generate forecast function to populate the worksheet. I'm going to do that. I have a item category called Florida I'm going to use. And I'm going to use this or do this on my west, main, and east location. Once the forecast has been generated, you have the lines inserted, and for each line, you have the forecasted data. And the way this is presented is through a graph here in the lower part of the screen. The base is the darker gray bars, and that's basically the item ledger entries. The result is the forecast, which is the light gray bars. So you can go up and down here and you can review the result of this forecast. You can also see the data here to the right. The forecast base, again, is the item ledger entries. So it takes the sales transactions from the item ledger entries. It totals them by month, since we're doing month. And it sends this to the forecasting engine. And the forecasting engine returns the result uh, as a forecast uh, by month. The forecast that's returned is for a quantity, but we also have a delta. So the delta is a plus and minus. So this is kind of an indication of the accuracy of the forecast. In this worksheet, you can then change. So let's say you want to do uh, more history. Instead of 12, you want to do 18 months. You can change the value here and you can say update forecast. It will refresh the line uh, here. So here's now 18 months and then six going forward. You can also pick different models, time series module, if I want to use this ETS instead. Then you get different results. This update forecast function runs on all the lines that you have selected. So you can do these updates on a couple of lines like this. 
and then select all of them and say update forecast so it will update those three you can also manually insert the new line so i can do the same item same location maybe i want to do this or a little bit further out and maybe a different model so with this i do insert it manually i say update forecast and now i have a two results here for the same item different model different horizon so i can then compare the result actually with these two okay once i'm happy with the result here in the demand forecast worksheet i'm going to delete the sign here i can implement the forecast so when i implement the forecast i pick a forecast i pick the forecast uh, where it's going to and i say okay so this will take the result from the forecast here and move it to the standard demand forecast so now if i go to the standard demand forecast I can see that the numbers from my forecast was moved over to these demand forecast entries. So with this simple step, we have generated a forecast suggestion using the Asia AI models. We have reviewed them and we have pushed it into the standard demand forecast that's used by MRP to generate suggestions. Once we implemented it, we see the checkboxes here get checked. So the records remain in the worksheet. So this is very much like the standard cost worksheet, if you use that one, that the records remain, but they are flagged if they've been implemented or not. Now you can schedule this to run automatically. So in the name here, there is this checkbox process by job queue. So you activate this for this default one and you pick the production forecast here once you've done that you can go to the job queue and you can create the job queue entry like this so this is the code unit that you put into the job queue it's called generate forecast and you can now schedule this to run automatically in the background so what this will do is it will go through the worksheets that has been flagged as something to run through the job queue it will generate or refresh the suggestions based on the parameter in the worksheets for the lines and then it will implement it which will update the demand forecast so this is a way to automate your demand forecast creation using the Azure AI models. I'm going to step back a bit. If you want to work with multiple worksheet names and you want to save the parameters, then we have this feature here that says update items and SKUs. When you click this, you can set the filter on the item or the location. And you say, OK, it will go through the records that's in this worksheet. And it will take the parameters and save those onto the item. So if I look for this item here, for example, on the item card, and it looks the same on the stock keep mute card we have this demand forecast tab. So these are the four parameters that's in the demand forecasting worksheet. So they're now saved here on the item. So the next time, if I create a new forecast worksheet and I pull in this item, it will default to these parameters. So this is a way to save the defaults by item. Another piece that's in this tool is to be able to import history. So there's a imported history table. So with this, you can import history for an item. It could be, for example, that you have 
an item that's fairly new that does not have any history or you just started using Business Central and, and you don't have enough history in the system to generate the forecast. So you can import records to this table and the system will use these records and combine them with item ledger entries to generate the data set to build the forecast on. This was a walkthrough of the demand forecast extension for Business Central. Thank you for watching and let us know if there's any questions.